So I'm going to be real. Today's chat can be heavy. It's deep because we are getting into some root work. So before we get started, I want you to know and more so believe that you are not a bad mom if you struggle with some triggers. And by triggers, I mean losing your patience and yelling because of a behavior that triggered you or just having a conversation and something triggers you to have some sort of negative emotion, all right? I, I hope that by listening to this episode, it could be a light bulb moment to move forward, to grow from this, thinking, oh my gosh, there are possibly some things that happen, behaviors maybe from my children or actions from my spouse that just set me off, that trigger me into an emotion, a behavior that maybe I need to be more intentional of not showing. <laughs> so now I realize that there might be some common themes of when this happens and wow, like these might actually be triggers and I'm just now realizing it to be able to work through it and grow through it. Okay. That is my hope. That is my prayer for this episode today. I hope that this episode can help you in just acknowledging them, becoming more aware of them so you can move forward in the direction that you feel is best. Come join me as I basically share all about me and how I work through my triggers and utilize my IASI approach within the Balanced Mom Method formula. Let's dive in. Hey mama, welcome to the Balanced Mom Method podcast. I know you're here because you're tired of living day after day like you're drowning in the responsibilities of motherhood. You're done struggling with trying to find the time and energy to get it all done every day. And you want to show your little ones a good example, but you're so exhausted, which has your negative self-talk on repeat, your patience spread thin, and you feel like you're losing yourself a little more every day. Plus, the mom guilt, societal comparison game, and unpredictabilities of motherhood just does not help in trying to make a change. Well, sweet friend, this podcast will guide you on how to connect with yourself to break free from that survival mode cycle, all by identifying and possibly simplifying your habits. Hey, I'm Jenna, and I've been where you are. I was consumed in the struggles of motherhood, and I needed to make a change to take back control of my time, energy, identity, and life. And in finding that freedom, it became my mission to help make that connection with moms that we can give our children and families the best and not at the expense of our own health, self, and well-being. Moms shouldn't have to choose between their families, priorities, and themselves. We can balance it all, and it all starts within ourselves. Let me take your hand and make that connection with you and equip you with simple, lifelong habits. If you are ready to say goodbye to just surviving and finally reclaim your life and motherhood, then you are in the right place. Let's get to the root of cultivating real change because it's time to feel like you again. Warm up that cold coffee, pop in your earbuds, and tighten that top knot, mama. Let's overcome together. Good morning, beautiful mama. I hope whenever you are listening to this episode that it is bringing you just beauty of the day, light of the day, and that you just have love covering over you right now because that is my hope. That is my prayer. That is the feeling that I want you to just be captivated in all the time is that presence, that love, that light, encompassing gratitude for this beautiful life that we are given. So I totally went off script there. I was just going to say, good morning. Have you left a review for the show yet? But I felt called to share a little bit extra. So now with an awkward transition, I'm going to ask, have you left a review for the show yet? Because I would be so appreciative if you left the Balanced Mom Method podcast an honest review to help share and spread the show out to more moms who need to hear it. Kaylee Gavia, and I'm sorry if I mispronounce your last name, <laughs> wrote, motherhood and growth. I love Jenna's articles, podcasts, and workbooks. They are great for new moms, old moms, or anyone that just wants to work on self-growth, especially through motherhood. Thank you, you beautiful soul. Your honest reviews will help this podcast reach as many moms as possible. Just thank you for your help. And what I kind of said in the teaser in the very beginning of this episode is today's chat can be heavy if, if you let it, I guess, because if you actually do this work, it can possibly be triggering talking about triggers because it can bring up emotions that you might be shoving under the rug. But for that, I feel that it may be a necessary chat. Do you agree? Because we aren't perfect, but we always do our best. 
And with awareness comes clarity and with clarity comes breakthrough. So I hope that this episode can shine some light onto you. So Jenna, what are you talking about here? <laughs> Give me some examples. Like what, 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 what's going on? So I want to share just a couple of examples of my triggers and how I utilize my IASI approach to overcome them. Because let me just paint a picture for you. Here we go. Another tangent. Tangent. When you kind of just like lose your patience or you notice yourself yelling or you notice yourself going, you know, down this, this thought spiral, this negative loop. Do you ever think of, wow, what, what set me off? What was there an emotion? Was there a behavior? Was there an action? Was there something that quote unquote triggered me into this emotion or action or behavior that I'm now giving off, right? So what I want to really go off of with, with this episode. I really want it to be short, snappy, but I want to just give examples of me and how I work through them and then kind of give you a blueprint, let's say, of how I work with my clients with going through identifying your triggers, working through your triggers using my IASI approach. All right. Does that sound good? So example number one is when I'm on like that brink of there's just so much going on, I just need time to catch up mood, you know, and then like that one thing, like that extra phone call, that random text message that like I have to take action on or look something up or like dive deep into. It's not just like a quick text message, some miscellaneous mail item or like there's that one thing that broke the camel's back. What is that saying? That straw that broke the camel's back type thing. And then I move from, okay, I'm getting really overwhelmed to complete full-blown overwhelm, anxiety, that weight in my chest, that pounding in my chest, my patience is shorter because I like, I just need that minute to gather myself and get physically caught up. If you can relate to this, by golly, this is probably like, I have, I've never gone to the doctor for my anxiety, but I feel, I feel like I can self-diagnose it just by like giving that example, but maybe I won't have more like an OCD obsessive compulsive disorder. I'm not sure, but I'm self-treated and I, I have learned just through my teachings and my education that I know how to help me overcome it. So this example that I'm sharing has probably been the biggest, I guess, trigger that that I have. And once I, I'm like, Jenna, okay, like you have to kind of bring yourself back in. I know how to reduce it, right? So I say that self-diagnose and self-treat, that this is my example. I'm self-diagnosing, self-treating because I am by no means giving medical advice here. And for that, I say, consult your doctor. All right, I am solely sharing my personal experiences and how I work through this and how it really, like, if I look at my myself a few years ago to present, like when I first became a mom and I, gosh, my anxiety just took a whole new form because before I became a mom, I had all those triggers down. Like I knew what, what would trigger me. I knew how I would behave. I knew how I would act. But then becoming a mom, that selfless piece, that never having a second to yourself, that you giving your all to everything and everyone else, like your children, like your children become number one. So I had to like relearn those triggers that set off my anxiety because I didn't have, I couldn't set aside five minutes to get something done like I could uh, when I was, you know, working outside the home and I wasn't a mom yet. Like you have so much more time to yourself before you become a parent. So that is that sense of like all those new anxious triggers that I, that I'm sharing. Like when I became a mom, I had to figure it all out again. So I'm solely sharing my experiences. And in the past, I would grab alcohol to numb the edges and it helped. It would blur the edges. It's like I needed that, that vice just to calm me down, just to like take the edge off, right? Like that, that is the saying, isn't it? (laughs) Like to take the edge off. So I remember telling my husband, like, I just want to feel life. Like I want to feel, feel it all. I want to feel the good. I want to feel the bad. I want, I want to feel life and I don't want to use vices or idols or anything that takes away from me feeling life. Now I'm not completely sober. I'm not, I, I still drink, you know, but I want to talk about how I transition to not running to it when I feel 
anxiety creeping in. I'm growing in the sense of, wow, I acknowledge this feeling coming in. Let's work through this. Let's not take something. And again, like if if you are on anxiety medication, I'm not telling you to stop. But this, like alcohol, we could all agree, like alcohol can be a bad vice. So that's what I'm talking about. So using my IASI, Identify, Audit, Simplify, Implement approach, I knew I had to get honest with myself. No more shoving that cycle under the rug. I had to face it. I had to feel it. We have to feel in order to heal And while I had to identify what was going on here, it was embarrassing, it was shameful. And once I identified that behavior or that trigger, let's say, I could then audit my current lifestyle and how I was responding to it. So from there came the simplify piece of that approach. Like, mama, something that is so not simple. But once we believe that we can take a simple approach to something, it becomes easier to follow through on it. So what is the simplest thing that I could do to break that habit around that trigger? And for me, that's evolved into meditation and breath work and being still and reconnecting to me. Let it be. I have to put my hands on my heart and focus on my breath. My fibers are precious. (laughs) And then I implemented. I walked it out. I did it. I, I focused on progress, not perfection. And I, when I felt that anxiety or that overwhelm creeping in, I would just take a fiver or I would talk to my husband or, you know, whatever that might have been. And I'm sharing like years, years past. So I don't really, it's crazy that I didn't even have this approach when I was really struggling through that. But it's crazy that I could kind of put those pieces back together looking, looking back. So what small, simple actions done consistently over time can bring you those results. All right. Another example, if you don't resonate with that, I I know that that one was really deep and that could be a very big um, struggle within your life. So please, like if you feel that you are struggling with this, seek help, like speak out to your doctor, talk to a loved one and, and look for help in, in that situation. Because I know that alcohol and substance abuse, it's, it's a big deal, right? And I'm not making light of this. And just because it's like, oh, well, I didn't have to go to the doctor to help me. If you are struggling, please reach out. But I wanted to share that example because I feel that Maybe because it is an embarrassing or shameful example that maybe by me sharing my vulnerability and how, yes, I would, you know, have a drink at night because I was, you know, overwhelmed or anxious, that that vulnerability can help in like normalizing that it is very common. And if you don't want to turn to alcohol, there are other ways, right? There's a way to quote unquote, break that habit. Okay. So another example is mom guilt. Again, this is all me. And I know that I've helped with my clients get through this too. So, but what I'm sharing with my mom guilt is like specific to exactly how mine was triggered. Okay. So think this cycle. My child's behavior is my trigger. And then I react. Then I feel guilty for how I reacted right? I'm like drawing a circle with my finger right now. (laughs) My child's behavior triggers me into a reaction. Then the guilt sets in for how I reacted. All right. So that is a very common example. And I recently shared this exact example on an earlier episode, but I want to bring light to it again because it fits perfectly here in this space. So that constant ping or notification ding on my phone. I then go check my phone get pulled away from my children or whatever may have been going on. And then I don't respond to that said notification because I got pulled away. I put my phone down, but then it heightens my stress and it reduces my patience because I'm in my mind. I'm like, I just needed a minute to respond to that. And then I didn't get to, and now I'm overwhelmed because I don't want to forget whatever I had to do on my phone. All right. Let it be my child's behavior that triggered me or 
my phone itself being that trigger, that ping on my phone, right? That response of the stress, the overwhelm, the overstimulation is what I wanted to correct. Not my child's behavior of, you know, wanting my attention because I was looking at my phone, like, bless their hearts, like they deserve my attention, right? But there's also things working from home that we have to work through boundaries also. But like, bless their hearts, my children's behavior was not what I wanted to correct. It was my trigger to the response. So again, it was my IASI approach that I had to walk through. So we all have these built up triggers that, you know, have everything to do with with us, how we perceive an experience in the past, maybe, or how we respond to the feels that are being evoked from us now, but then how we're processing them in the present moment and how we behave to them in the present moment after we are triggered. So our brains are wired to keep us safe and efficient. Even if this trigger or behavior can have that negative impact on ourselves or someone else that we might care about, but our our brains, like we are operating 80 to 90% subconsciously. And I want to help you flip that around. I want to elevate your consciousness because I want you to feel alive now in the present moment and not be some conditioned bundle of reflexes, right? I want us to wake up from autopilot, wake up from being triggered and then having that automatic negative response. Once you're conscious to it and aware of what's happening, that's how we could kind of, you know, rewire the brain. And instead of reacting subconsciously out of habit, we can consciously respond and or break, you know, a a past habit that we might want to break or kind of rework a little bit. So I know that this show, this podcast is all about habits, but I guess I could rephrase that into intentional habits, right? It could be about habits, but it could still be about breaking some bad habits to create some more intentional, well-rounded, let's say, habits, wellness habits. My daughter just woke up, so I just lost my train of thought. (laughs) So, okay. So by using my IASI approach within the Balance Mom Method formula, it's an amazing tool to keep in your toolbox because it helps you be intentional within your life and living consciously, listening to how you want to feel and how you want to respond to your life. So some additional tips and strategies for you to take away and not just have this be about me and my personal examples of just, I guess those examples were just to kind of help you paint that picture, maybe be relatable, even if it couldn't, if you couldn't relate to those two examples that I shared specifically, but just relate to that sense of like, we're not perfect, right? We all have those vices or those idols. The two that I shared were, you know, alcohol and my phone, right? Being that idol or that vice and then having, you know, my child's behavior come in and then me maybe respond negatively by losing my patience or just saying like, I just need a minute or, you know, whatever it might've been. We all lose our patience. And like, I am saying this because we're not perfect. And this is a very vulnerable you know, episode, I guess, for me even to share, because I do want to shine light on that. Like we are not perfect. So some additional tips and strategies, because we might not be chasing perfection, right? But we're always trying to do our best and to give our best. And sometimes it takes unraveling pieces of ourselves and getting into that inner work to, to help ourselves first in order to give ourselves out. So number one is identify, identify what those trigger points are, like literally write them down. As you go about your day, pay attention to those behaviors or scenarios that you're experiencing that maybe challenge your patience or make you want to yell or bring out your anxiety or overwhelm or overstimulation. Identify the exact behavior or situation that led you to feel those feelings or led you to those actions. Then identify what your reaction is. Did you lose your patience? Did you yell? Did you have heightened overwhelm, right? What is that initial response? And be honest with yourself because it's important in identifying and working through those triggers. So just write all that comes up for you. Don't like second guess it. Just write it down, okay? And then you can move on to audit, getting to that root of where and why you're being triggered. I want to preface this with that I do believe that we all have to feel in order to heal. I know I said that already, but if you 
feel that you want to take this conversation to a professional coach like myself or a certified therapist or counselor, which I am not a therapist or a counselor, please do so. But by getting to the root, ask yourself, why do you think that you're being triggered this way? Why do you think that your response is the way it is? Really like pay attention to how like that's what audit means, right? Like pay attention and figure out like the step by step with you like that lifestyle or those steps that are being taken like does this have to do with maybe how you were raised or maybe your behaviors of your children are expressing things that possibly like you were punished for and now like that's that's what you know and that's how you're parenting now or another experience that you know maybe brought you shame or aggression or consequences on you and now you're responding to that that inner um you know um behavior that maybe that you that you have you know inside of you maybe there's some trauma within your past that you that you want to work through or maybe now you're like noticing that oh okay like you know I have to work through this a little bit so or maybe like it's just simply that you have some unmet need like you notice you're triggered and you're like oh wait I'm already stressed or I'm hungry I'm tired you know like you're just doing the dang you know busy and it's just that straw that broke the camel's back so next you simplify. Make that simple step towards overcoming that trigger. What is the simple way that you can be intentional in helping you cope and helping you break a habit, work through a habit, overcome this trigger and or response? So these triggers are like automatic responses that cause our brain to have like less ability to focus on controlling or like doing, having a new response, right? So that trigger is like signaling that automatic response and you're trying to like rework and rewire to have that conscious response to lead to you know react to um, break leading to oh my gosh to, (laughs) to stop reacting automatically to what has been conditioned with inside of you. Does that make sense? So with being, probably not because I just stumbled over those words, (laughs) but being intentional with staying aware of when we are experiencing them, it will help in our ability to take back control in the coping, breaking, working through, and overcoming that automatic response to become more of a conscious awareness of a response. Okay. So finally, we implement. You walk it out, mama. And this is where I come in to help you work through this approach and iron out every step of the way in making a game plan and moving forward. So a couple words of advice or tips as you embark in this new intentionality, if you're looking to work with your triggers, or maybe now you're just becoming aware, like, wow, I might have some triggers to let's like try to pay attention a little bit. And no harm, no foul, right? Like when I... I've been getting a lot of messages lately and just like having a lot of conversations about triggers and like, then I'm like, I should do an episode on this. So I really had to sit down and think of like, what are some of my triggers? So I like literally wrote these out, even though that first example was more so previous or in the past, but it was something that took a lot of intentionality and a lot of, um, just like work to break that cycle. So a couple words of advice here is limit distractions. Example, watching your favorite TV show or checking your phone with your kids there. (laughs) Like I find that when I am not fully present in what I am doing, it leads me to losing my patience a lot quicker with my children, for example. It's a lot easier to lose my my patience, let's say. And I don't really watch TV. So I, I, but I know like that is a big, um, example, just with the general population of society. So the expectations might not be the same between my kids and myself in in that situation. Like I expect possibly to be able to, let's say, watch that show or check that notification, but they expect my attention. I, like I said, I don't know if that was a good example because I'm not really someone to watch TV, but like if I expect to make a phone call uninterrupted, I need to communicate my expectations. So that leads me to the second bit of advice. So number one was limit those distractions when you're able, like the distractions as in like trying to be so engulfed in a movie when your children are wanting to play or like scrolling your phone when your children are right there in the room with you. Okay. So just try to limit those distractions because if you're anything like me and I'm, I'm throwing myself under the bus here, like that's when I know that my patience 
is less because I'm trying to do one thing and they're expecting another. So again, that's why I don't like to work when they're awake because work is something that I, I have to do. I don't need to watch TV and I don't need to check my phone, but I, I do have to work. Like I have a, a business that I have to, to keep up and I try to limit working when they're awake because I know that my patience is less when I'm overstimulated in a different area or when they're they're wanting to play or expect my attention. That let me just lead into here. It leads me to that second tip is communicate your expectations. This is easier with a spouse or with an adult, of course, but I do communicate with my my son, he's 4. I I don't want this to sound like a control thing, right? But we all have expectations, even if we don't think we do, right? So just think like when you're angry or you get upset and expectations, an expectation of yours was not met. So learning to communicate those expectations with your loved ones, coworkers, friends, whomever really helps in the relationship as a whole. So I'm, I'm starting to do this with my four-year-old. I'll get back to that. I was, I start to do this with my four-year-old, like, okay, Jay, like I have to make a phone call to the doctor or I have to, you know, call so-and-so, or I have to answer this email. It's very urgent. And that I'm communicating my expectation. Can you play for five minutes, you know, by yourself or, you know, I'll be in the other room, but I'll, you know, still be able to be watching you, but I'm doing this. Can you do this? And once we're on that same page, it like, it makes the world of difference. Can you agree with that? So to keep on with just these examples with myself here, if you're a stay at home mom or a work at home mom, even when my son was little and probably had no idea what I was talking about, I did start earlier than when he was four. So my daughter is, is one and I'm, I communicated now with him, but she's still listening. I started early on in explaining things like this. So if I had to make that quick phone call or I had some urgent to do where I needed him to, like I said, play by himself or be a little more quiet or whatever it was, <laughs> like, let's be real, be a little more quiet. It, it always happens, right? It's, you can't get mad at it, but I talked to him about it before versus yelling at him after the fact of being loud or whatever. And, you know, I, mommy was on the phone. I don't like doing that because to them, they're like, what, I, what, what are you talking about? Like, like, I'm sorry. You know? So I, I just want to give him a little heads up, even with your children. It goes a long way. I promise. So finally, last tip here is to be patient with yourself and those around you. Be patient with yourself and those around you. Take things one day at a time and don't get discouraged if you feel that things like aren't getting better because that just goes to show that you are 100% in the awareness phase. So keep at it, mama. It's gonna take those baby steps, but continual baby steps day after day after day, you're gonna grow so, so much. We are all a work in progress, but we do our best and we all want to live a happy life full of peace, presence, confidence, clarity, and balance. My mama friends, like that is my prayer for you. You can do anything that you set your mind to. You just have to make that decision that you want to change or make that change, right? A change in that habit. And you have to have belief that you can do it. I know you can. Schedule a free clarity call with me if you want to go deeper in this work. I am continuously working on my continuing education, working with myself and other moms. And the reason I share that is because I just enrolled in a few more courses in psychology and neuropsychology, neuroplasticity, and that might be a little spoiler for some ways that we can work together in the future. But I just want to share that because I am not a doctor. I am not a therapist, but I am continuing my education and I cannot wait to see how we can work together in the future. Until next week, as always, simply be you. You have everything inside of you to reach your breakthrough, Mama. I'm sending my love and light. Did you find this episode very well worth a farming? Please, we Mama, rip you. Thank you so much for spending this time with me on the Balanced Mom Method podcast. I pray this episode has grown and helped you in some way. If it has, I'd be so grateful if you left a review sharing how it's impacted you. It truly lights me up hearing you're on your way to your breakthrough. And then please share this episode with another mom who may be struggling to remind her we are never alone. And remember, there isn't ever a one size fits all to overcoming our personal hardships, but there are a lot of parallels with how we show up to our lives and common habits we can make our own to live an intentional life full of peace, presence, confidence, clarity, and balance. 
Be sure to check the show notes for additional ways to connect with me, our mom community, and resources and courses for you to overcome your survival mode cycle once and for all with doable habits. Thank you. I appreciate all you are and all you do. Sending my love and light.